Volcanoes are the most powerful of all natural events. We can't predict when they can erupt. We don't know how big the eruptions will get when they start. One fifth of everyone in the world lives in a volcanic zone. Oh, that, that's going off. That's all right. Helmet, helmet, helmet. It's clear from the start that John Seach has a dangerous passion. He's a volcano hunter, and this one's right on our doorstep. So there's no way to predict, there's no way to know when this thing's gonna really bang. We had no warning there, we didn't even feel an earthquake. Wow. Now John is taking us to one of the most active volcanic regions on Earth, the island of New Britain off the coast of Papua New Guinea. A once tropical paradise terrorized by a volcano called Taverva. Hey, stop, 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 look at this. Look over here. Look at that. Oh, wow. Gee, it's close. It's close by. That is huge. This is much more, active than, it's much more active than when I was here a couple of years ago. Oh, really? Now, that's what we came to see. This sort of thing turns volcanologists green with envy. <laughs> We're more than five kilometres away. And even from this distance, Taverva is menacing and angry. Is this considered a large eruption? No, not yet. Not, not yet. But it can change without warning. <laughs> and we're, we're going to go over there. Yeah, we plan to go into the danger zone tomorrow. <laughs> is that a wise thing to do, given the level of activity that's uh, currently occurring? Maybe not wise, but necessary. Sometimes in science, the only way you can achieve a goal and make observations is to go into dangerous places. Right. But going in with a purpose. It's not just walking around as a tourist. It's going in there to get some observations that can be of use and then getting out of there. Today, we'll drive as close as we can through a dusty wasteland choked with ash from Taverva. Yeah, we're actually standing inside a huge caldera. It's actually a crater that's 14 kilometres wide. And almost 1,500 years ago, there was a huge eruption that sent ash around the world. And it changed the climate in Europe for a year. And the sun only shone for four hours a day for one year in Europe, halfway around the world. So could this volcano erupt with that kind of destructive capacity today? Yes, this, this crater could do the same thing all over again. And what, what would be the impact on Australia, which is relatively close by? The impact would be devastating. There could be tsunamis that reach the north coast of Australia, and there could be ash which blocks out the sun and causing crop failures. So all the crops would fail for one or two years. A volcanic winter, in other words? Yeah. So we're literally standing on top of a time bomb. And it's ticking. And it's ticking faster than it was six months ago. Wow. I can just sort of hear like a tinkling like raindrops. Is, what is that? Yeah, that's the lava bombs falling onto the side of the crater. Big rocks. Big rocks. They might weigh half a tonne. John is a scientist, a chemistry graduate, who provides his observations and data to volcanologists and scientific institutions. I first got my passion for chasing volcanoes about 20 years ago when I was living in the South Pacific. And I saw a volcano rising out of the sea, and that's when I got hooked. Whoa, look at those rocks! <laughs> He's been to and studied more than 120 volcanoes. He goes where others don't. Dodging lava is part of the job. These are his home videos. I like them all. There's no such thing as a bad eruption. A sobering thought as above us, Taverva continues to roar. Oh, lightning, have you got that? Get it, that's hardly ever been filmed. Go for it, go for it, just on the main plume. Just get that lightning, damn it. That is so rare. In the 1994 eruption, two people were killed by lightning. 
So, so the volcano creates its own weather system yeah. which generates lightning. Yeah, it's actually not really known how it creates the lightning, but that's a hazard. If we're over there tomorrow and that happens again, we can be struck down by lightning. Mm -hmm. That is amazing, that is so rare. Isn't You've it? seen something that is so rare. That's made my week seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> We retreat for the day and check in at the closest hotel to the volcano. Jesus, it's a mess. Yeah, it's pretty different to last time I saw it. Yeah. Looks, it's looks like, like a some war sort of, zone. Looks like some sort of tidal waves come in. They're digging out after a massive volcanic mudslide. This is your hotel? Yes, man. What this happened is, here? <laughs> what a mess. Uh, major devastation, isn't it? It really is. Your pool is full of volcanic silt. Absolutely full. Absolutely full. You could so try I could, walking I could on it. technically walk on the surface of your swimming pool. <laughs> yes, it's solid, all right. Tim Wilson's travel lodge stands alone on the outer edge of Rabaul, with a next-door neighbour who could blow them up at any time. Rabaul has been under siege since a major eruption 15 years ago. And there was thunder, lightning and worse, rain that made the mud slide in deadly torrents. Rabaul's citizens ran for their lives. The eruptions buried the town under metres of ash, filling the harbour with stone and turning what was once the Pearl of the Pacific into the Pacific's Pompeii. Why do you stay? I suppose it's just something in the blood. We've been at it for a long time now. I don't want to give up. Uh, this is the way it is. It's Tim against the volcano. Yes. At the nearby Volcano Observatory, scientists are listening to her rumble with seismic equipment funded by Australia. Rebel is, is different to most volcanoes because we're the only caldera that's actually had a substantial eruption in historical times. Right. Volcanologists like Steve Saunders say a climate-changing eruption isn't likely for more than a thousand years. Taverva should be settling down. Statistically, it's, it's unlikely that we'll have a big eruption. But as I always say, the, the volcano doesn't read the books. It'll uh, do it when it's ready. But what most intrigues scientists is the process that turns some volcanoes into super volcanoes, a once in 50,000 year event with the potential to wipe out human life. A super volcano is the largest of all possible eruptions. Does this volcano have the potential to erupt with that kind of force? Rabaul does have the potential to be a super volcano. And what would the impact be on Australia? If Rabaul erupted in a, in a super volcano explosion, we'd be finished in Australia. On the nearby island of Matapit, the locals have one of the most extraordinary views on the planet. They've lived here for a thousand years, but the most recent eruptions have made life hell. This is actually our original home, and it's hard to live, but because of the continuous asphalt, we're just thinking of leaving now. So if the government did give you an alternative place to live, you would consider moving? Yes. The hardy megapod bird is the only resident of Rabaul at peace with the volcano. Volcano bird. Every morning, men from Matapit race to the bird's nesting grounds to dig eggs out of the volcanic soil. Oh, there you go. Look at that. It's very warm from being buried deep inside the ground. It's a hell of a lot of work for just one egg, but these actually represent the main source of income for the people in this area. In the markets in Rabaul, this egg will fetch about a dollar. In the local language, Taverva means nest of hornets. Tonight, we share a fire in the village. Tomorrow, we'll be going deep into the hot zone. Some of 
Most people flee volcanic eruptions. We're paddling right into one. I think our plan today is very simple. We're going to stay here for no more than an hour. We're going to go up to this area of smoking ground and we're going to make observations about what's happening along this fracture. All right, well, this is it. Getting closer. It's like a moonscape, isn't it? Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. All around us, the mountain is smouldering. The ground gets hotter with every step. Well, what we've got here is we've got a couple of vents opening up and, and they're moving down the side. So this indicates there's a line of weakness in this area. Now the concern for the volcano and the people is that these vents may be moving down the hill. Have you seen this line of weakness before? Is this, no. is this something new? This has happened uh, within the last uh, six months, I'd say. And so this shows that this is active and dynamic. Things are changing day by day. Beneath our feet is 30 square kilometres of lava, the equivalent of 60 Sydney harbours, and it's trying to get out through the top of the volcano and through the openings in her side. This landscape is really dynamic and volatile and alive. I can feel the heat coming off this steam. You can smell the sulphur. There are flecks and bits of ash flying through the air. It, whoa! <laughs> the steam surging out from the volcano is scalding. Yeah, this is the gas mask zone. Got it. The air is thick with hydrogen sulfide, and the heat increases with every step. This is what it's all about, and I just love the scientific discovery and just the whole experience. It makes you feel sort of alive and, and humble at the same time to be in the presence of something so massive and so powerful. And privileged. Yeah, that's we're, right. We're there... standing here and there's no one else around. Yeah. We just, we've just got this show to ourselves. Yeah. Next morning, we return to Taverva, this time by air. Perfect weather provides us with a chance to fly to the top of the mountain. That is just staggeringly beautiful. I don't, I'm not sure I've ever seen anything quite so beautiful in my life. It seems to be shooting out from a couple of different vents. Are we safe here? Pilot's making a break for it. Living in the shadow of this dangerous and beautiful volcano is all these kids have ever known. Statistically, they'll face another powerful eruption within their lifetime. I'm not really sure why, why they're here. I think a lot of the people, um, they wish the volcano didn't erupt. It's annoyance to them more than anything. Uh, they'd prefer that this thing went back to sleep for 50 years. Life here couldn't be more precarious.